Oh. All right, today is the day. I'm so stoked, so pumped, so excited, so amped, because today, we're gonna be doing the electrical in the bus. And I have been looking forward to this day for the last week or two because I've just been Googling, where's my shoes? I've just been Googling things like crazy and today we're gonna put some wires in the bus. Let's do it. So, my man, Adam Hutchins, is coming over today. He's an electrician, which is awesome, because I'm not an electrician, and he is going to teach me how to do it. But I'll give you guys a quick rundown of what the plan is before we get started. All right, so here's the bathroom, and here is our breaker box, and we are going to be running the power up through the wall into the breaker box. Once we get the power into the box, we're going to run it through the bus. And what we've got is 12 gauge wire, and we've got 20 amp breakers. So we'll have plugs in the bathroom, plugs in the bedroom, plugs in the front, and uh, we'll be juiced up, which is so awesome because we're just one step closer to getting this thing done. I'm hoping to be done in less than a month, so we'll see. Some of these, these are like really narrow junction boxes, gang boxes, gang, gangers, uh, because I, uh, what did I do? I used two by threes, so I needed to get something narrower than the regular ones. And I found some like metal ones too. I don't know, I'm gonna wait for Adam to get here to tell me. These small boxes suck, they're way too small. They're like only an inch and a quarter, which is not enough to get the wires in. We found boxes that were two and a half deep. Oh, it's so perfect for a two by three. Um, and I didn't know this, but you measure with a little bit of a gap up here for the plywood to butt right up against. So um, that was just perfect and it fits just right. Know how you want to run stuff before you do. Like, get a game plan. That way, you can figure out the best route. When it comes to having wires in boxes, especially when you have kind of shallow boxes like this that we had to use and thicker gauge wire that we're using, you want to avoid having three wires in a box as much as you can. Because it just makes it difficult to get the space that you want and there's also something called box fill and you don't want to overdo that and what that is is it's just it's a determiner of how many wires are able to fit in a box to have it still be kosher it all comes back to overheating and stuff with things like that you don't have too many wires in too small of a space the wires will get hot and then they'll melt onto each other and then you have a problem give yourself like optimal six inches outside of the box. That way when you pull your plug out, you have plenty of room to work on. And you run them all flat and you staple them in? Yes, yes. When you, when you staple stuff, you wanna make sure that it's flat and it's not pinching. You wanna do nice bends. If you have any, any sharp bends like this, going back, that's really bad because there's also something called bending radius <laughs> to where, again, if something's bent too tight, then there's, you know, it's not a good path on the wire for the electricity to go through and it'll overheat at that bend. And you want to get stuff as clean as you can. You don't want to have, you know, here I have kind of a 90 bend, so I want a bit easier on this staple so that it's not pinching and there's still a bit of wiggle room for this wire. And then you also want to get, if you're drilling holes in a series, you want to drill them as straight as you can so it's a nice easy hole. it I like to make 
a cross cut with my knife, you want to leave a quarter inch of insulation coming in the back. That way it doesn't, mm. you know, the bare wires don't rub on that. You want to make sure you don't go deep enough to hit the wires. You're just trying to score it. Mm -hmm. You peel it back. When you get it to your cross cut, you just give it a little bit of a pull and then it pulls out. You take out this paper, undo your ground. Same thing with this wire. I always like to start with the grounds first. And what you do is when you have multiple grounds, you have to make sure they are all down to one because you only have one spot on a switch. So with the crimp, which is what I'm gonna use, you give it a bend, you give it a spin, and that tightens them together. You get your crimp sleeve, you put it on down to where they're tied tight together, get your crimping tool, you crimp it on, just give it one good squeeze. You want to keep it kind of long. This is what's going to tie onto your switch. Mm. This, push that into the back. So then there's my ground ready to hook up. For switches, switches don't need neutrals. The neutral is your white wire. The neutral is coming in from your incoming power, which is going to be from that plug there. And then it's going out to the light through the switch. The switch is just designed to break power so the neutral isn't needed. So I like to spin my neutrals too, so I keep them tight together. Cut them to equal lengths. Strip them, cap them together so that they feed past the switch. Tuck them up into the box so they don't get in the way. I have no idea where this switch is either. <laughs> then what you wanna do is you wanna get your hots. You wanna give them a little bit of a loop in the back so you know you have a bit extra to work with. Cut everything all to one length. Strip, you give them a little 90 degree curl. And now this is ready to put on the screw. When you go around the screw, yeah. make sure you always get it so it's going in the direction. So when I tighten the screw, it's gonna tighten this too. Mm. Adam Hutchins is officially the man. We got all of the wires in the bus and everything's running to the panel so we just have to make up the panel tomorrow and then I have to figure out how to get power into the panel which is a whole nother situation but I've got stuff showing up from Amazon tomorrow which should make it a lot easier. And it's raining like crazy. Like crazy I tell you. It's gonna be straight, it's not gonna really bend. We're getting them both kind of started. Oh yeah, and you shove them through can... at the same time. It's just being awkward. It can sometimes get kind of tight putting in two of these, two 12 twos inside one of these half inch guys. Adam came by yesterday and, or not yesterday, a couple days ago now, he came back and we set up the um, the power source wire, which is a six gauge wire. It's a big gray one that we ran down through the floor. Um, and we plugged in the neutral here to this nut and then a positive here. Um, <clears throat> and since it's only 110 coming in to the system, only every other breaker is going to work. And we're not exactly sure which one so once we get power to it, um, if it doesn't work, then we'll switch it to this nut over here. Um, and so yeah, that's the electrical for the bus. If you don't know what you're doing, I'd uh, highly recommend making a friend who can do it all for you um, because I felt really uncomfortable doing electrical. But now I think I got a kind of a grasp on it, but still. Um, yeah, that's it. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, likes or dislikes you can drop all those below thanks for watching next week i'm going to show you how we're going to get power up into this system which is going to be a lot of fun so uh see you guys next time